Hey, what's going on guys? Kumagigianzi here. In this video, I'd like to demonstrate an operating system I've developed in order to create boot sector games and apps, believe it or not, using the plain machine codes. So let me just um, adjust the autofocus so you can see. Yeah, now this is okay. So you can see the screen in like focused manner so you know like um before i started the demonstration just a few words on why this project actually appears appears to be so if you have a look at the os dev uh, wikipedia uh main page or something like that you will see that if you don't have an experience in coding and assembly for at least the uh, like for the recent 10 years or so um, or if you don't have a degree in computer science or something like that, that you don't even have to go stepping into that operating system development ever. So when you're reading that, it feels like it's not for you really. So you just read through and then you think kind of like, okay, so yeah, I'm dumb, I'm stupid, it's not about me, so I'm not the guy who's going to be okay doing that, things like that. So those are kind of the thoughts that are coming into your head when you initially kind of reading through the page. However, um, well, probably thankfully to my Code Monkey King's nature, uh, I've never been listening to others and uh, reading <laughs> this, be wearing, uh, be wearing like uh, notifications, let's say. And instead I was just diving, diving uh, into the process, learning whatever, and trying to see what can I come up with, uh, what can I eventually come up with. And this project is not an exception. So uh, initially the idea was to have the list of games, uh, the boot sector games uh, that you could have list and then type the name of, uh, then just type the name of the game and run it and play the game, have fun, then go back to console, try another game. That's that's pretty much all about it. But then I thought that playing games, well, I, I've been demonstrating that uh, in the previous videos, you can just check, check up those on my channel. But I was thinking like, uh, okay, uh, developing games is uh, like uh, playing games like those that are just hard coded to the floppy image is not that cool. Uh, and can we actually can we actually uh, create and can I can I uh, create an environment allowing actually developing uh, boot sector games and apps? And I've started working on this project. And uh, by the way, I have uh, 20 videos uh, live coding this operating system. So if you're interested, you can have a look how am I doing that in assembly language in NASM, in uh, uh, NASM assembly to be exact. So this is the x86 uh, processor architecture. This is my good old Asus laptop. Okay, so um, currently, uh, whatever, uh, whatever uh, each of the commands you can see right over in here, are 512 byte sized programs written in assembly language and bundled into, into the floppy image. So we have the system commands like help, clear, theme, edit, save, load, new and run, which we would walk through in this video, and also five user defined programs allowing us to develop in x86 machine codes, believe it or not. So that's kind of the idea. So uh, before, when it was about games like Sokoban, Sokoban or Tetris or even even a Pac-Man clone, uh, I've been demonstrating that. You just type the name of the game, the playing the game. But uh, just to give you an idea, so here, if I just type prog1, this is the user-defined prog. So instead of this welcoming message, we could have just played Tetris or whatever other game. So whatever fits into 512 bytes. By the way, even chess may fit into that size. And there are programs, there, there, there are the programs exist out there that actually do fit into 512 bytes. And I'm going to be making my own one uh, on my other chess programming channel one day, quite pretty soon, I hope. So uh, you can really, you can do really lots of things with 512 bytes. So if we just go back to uh, those discouraging uh messages uh, in the OS dev uh, Wikipedia, uh, I've realized that, you know, like you don't need to build a spaceship and it's sometimes it's enough to build a skateboard and just uh, use use a tape to 
connect the rocket engine to it and then you just uh, go in like something like in the back in back to the future movie so you, you don't really need to do things uh in the preferred way how normal people doing that so i've decided that instead of having an, uh, instead of having uh, instead of having a file system i would just have a set of pre-coded commands like here like you can see here and uh, for load and save functionality, I can just write to the specific, uh, to this actually prog one, two, three, four, five. This is where I can read and write. I'll demonstrate this very soon. And uh, instead of having like, I don't know, compilers or like interpreters, like basic interpreter, I can just uh, could, I can, I can just create a one single hex editor to be able to input raw bytes representing x86 machine codes and then just run them and that's pretty much that's pretty much all about it okay so uh as you can see here we would be, we would be playing around with this uh proc placeholder so they all are really the same so if i say proc2 for instance you just give me the placeholder for for proc2 and so on and so on if i type some gibberish it tells me that command not found so all pretty uh self-explanatory uh, self so we can also clear Okay, and let's have a look at the list of commands again. So before actually showing the functionality of uh, how the hex editor works and how we can uh, develop under this operating system. Yeah, by the way, I uh, probably didn't tell, tell you yet how this is called. I'm sorry, so the autofocus is not that great again. Um, so this is called GameOS. Uh, so the operating system intended to run the boot sector games and to develop those as well. All right, so uh, let me start the demonstration from themes, uh, which is something that I'm mostly proud of. So, you know, like, in, so we are currently in, uh, so this mode in BIOS uh, interrupts, uh, from the BIOS interrupts perspective, this is, if you say move, move AH uh, 0x00, I believe, and then to AL, oh my God, I forgot that. Uh, so this is mode three, uh, yeah, this is mode three, uh, 80, uh, 80 characters width, 25 characters height, and 16 colors. So we have these colors that can be the background colors and the foreground colors. Yeah, autofocus is going crazy, so better not, not point into the screen with my fingers. Okay. All right, so, I'm sorry guys, just, yeah, hold on a sec. Yeah, now this is okay. Um, yeah, just better not be pointing to the screen with my fingers. So let's try. So uh, here, uh, this assembly, this simple assemble uh, app written in, in assembly asks us to uh, specify the color from 0 to F to uh, initialize the background color. And let's say this would be dark gray. Okay, and for foreground color, let it be like white okay uh, uh sorry i'm in black right and now what is really surprising here and this is something I'm, I'm proud of so if we say go to the editor and you see like scrolling happens and despite the fact that scrolling happens we can still see so i just well i can just input some uh oh man sorry i can input some random by the year at the address of 500 let's say like this but uh, even when I scroll, the uh, the color still remains, and this wasn't really that trivial, so I needed to write to the video mem memory directly in order to achieve this kind of effect, okay? And same for a list, uh, sorry, same for a list when, uh, okay, oh, we don't, I, I, I renamed this, there is no more list, now it calls help. Same for this, so, th so this is scroller as well, so just scrolling down, but the color remains. We can go for a dreaded uh, Windows blue screen theme if we say 1E. So for those who have been using Windows, you might be recognizing this. Okay, so it's really uh, it's really cool to play around with it that was with this kind of themes. This is one of my favorite uh, things to <laughs> to consider basically. Okay, so I don't know. Probably, uh, yeah. When I have, when I, when I see, see the screen of the smartphone, uh, oh, probably this one looks the best. So let's 
let's keep uh, the demonstration within this dreaded Windows blue screen theme. Okay, so uh, so help is self-explanatory. Then we can clear, which has been demonstrated before. Just clears the screen by uh, resetting the mode um, uh, to the text mode, and 16 color is back. So uh, let's start by the edit. Uh, so edit is the hex editor, and by the way, uh, the byte that I've entered at the uh, address 500 hexadecimal uh, still remains there. Okay. Uh, but if, um, let's say, if I run this currently, so we have a run command, so just escape from here, we have a run command uh, to run the whatever code is, uh, uh, so uh, when, I, uh, when I hit enter, the instruction pointer goes, uh, would go to this 500 hexadecimal, and, and try and would try to start executing the instructions, whatever instructions are available there. But currently it would hand forever because uh, there are no valid instructions. So you see like it just hands and even control alt, alt delete doesn't help. So I just need to turn off the computer, turn it on, turn it on again. But I just wanted to demonstrate you guys that, uh, so what happens if we just don't have that sort of a, um, okay, so, Okay, let me just type theme quickly and go to dreaded windows. Okay, yeah, now now we we now now it's much better. So um, let's go back to the editor. Well, obviously here the memory has been uh, was reset. Okay, but if we type some valid instructions, so let's say current now I would uh, I would enter the instruction that would be jumping back to the shell and shell is running at address. Uh, 8,000 hexadecimal. So if I simply say EA00, oh, I'm sorry, uh, this is the address. No, not like this. Sorry, guys. So edit again. So first specifying the address, then EA00. I may, I may do spaces, I may not. Four spaces, 08. Okay. And here are the bytes, so you see they're already available there, we just go back, and if I click run now, what it does, it would simply return to the shell, back to the shell, and here is what's happening, okay? So I have this, this is this is quite pretty cool, right? So it was hanging before, but now it just drops back to, to the shell. Now, uh, you might be wondering, so let's uh, let's assume that you've created some fantastic program, not, not like this one, but some someone that really does something useful, so you want to save this. And we have, and he, th this is where this uh, up to five user-defined programs uh, come very handy. So let's say instead of the prog one, which currently displays this message, so this this is the valid assembly code being assembled to machine codes, and there is a program just there is a routine to print a string, plenty amount of things like initializing the registers. By the way, it may run not only in the boot sector, which uh, every where, where, but yeah, uh, I forgot to say that every command runs in the boot sector because initially it was intended for running boot sector games. So to make a game feeling like as as it does when when it boots when there is nothing else but the game. Uh, but by just in the segment registers proper properly, I can run this programs not only in the boot sector but also in uh, in the scope of the editor editor so starting from the address 500 hexadecimal okay so um yeah let probably let me start with the load first if I say load and let's say uh, here uh, I can load to the editor one of five user defined programs so let's start from the very first one okay and if I go back to the edit I can actually see the bytes uh, being responsible to display that that kind of message so here we have uh, by the way, in the first line, when if I just put my finger, it probably starts uh, starts some disaster. So this is the code to return to the shell. By the way, so this is, this is the only one I can recognize currently. Okay. Uh, also, like the messages uh, are encoded as ASCII characters, so we can change them. So whatever, we, we, it's like changing the executable files. Uh, so it's like not no need to compile you just can change the byte and the executable file would be working in a, in a, in a different way you just need to make sure that you know what you're doing right okay but we're not going to be doing this now uh, what i want to demonstrate that whatever code we have here would be executed if we run uh, if we use the run command so if i just now use the run command you can see that uh, the prog the prog one has been executed but it can still see uh, 
uh, the addresses of the variables holding the messages. So it doesn't only work in the boot sector, but also what works in this 500 hexadecimal uh, uh, memory address. Because, well, that's by the way, the very first address available, uh, if you have a look at the uh, real, x86 uh, real mode memory map, so how the layout is done. So starting from the address 500 hexadecimal, you can uh, use that kind of conventional memory, free memory to use for your needs, right? Okay, so, uh, and you can just, let's say you've been uh, working on PROG1 in the previous, like, uh, previous time, right? So now you want to uh, keep working on this PROG. So you can uh, edit something. And uh, it, uh, I can edit, but I will just break it. So uh, no, no need to, to demonstrate that. Instead, uh, I want to demonstrate how can we store uh, user, so some programs uh, entered in the machine codes, how we can store those programs. Uh, as the user defined program. So uh, in order to so we have a look at the editor again, we, we see that uh, it's full of bytes. So there is a new command that allows just simply to clear the editor. So the memory in the editor has been cleared now and we can type our custom program again. So let's type uh, the simple jump, the simple part jump from uh, from this uh, from, from, from this uh, address range where the program runs and back to the shell, which runs at 8,000 hexadecimal. So I can simply say EA0000008, hit enter, go back, type run, make sure it works. Okay, it works. And now I can overwrite whatever of the user defined programs with this one that I've just created. So let's say I want, well, just, just one more time. So I say prog1. And I have this output, but now let's say I can say save, and I choose where to save prog one, two, three, four, or five. So let's save this to prog one, and we see, and we see the message. So 512 bytes from from this editor scope has been written to the USB flash drive, exactly at the place where the prog one is. So uh, if we now try to run the prog one, either uh, in the boot sector or why the run command, uh, well, it's still, let's say, load and prog1. So now it's prog1 loaded there. So let's have a look. It still should have our codes there. Okay, so we can run it uh, from this 500 hexadecimal location in memory. It still, it's, it still goes back. And, but, 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 what, what, but what is even more cool that we can still run this prog just, just, like a run, just like a regular program and it still jumps back to shell so it no longer uh, prints the message uh, that it was printing like this prog2 etc okay so prog2 is still printing something so let's say uh, I want to so let's have a look what we have in the editor yeah we have this uh, jump back so let's save this to say prog four okay and now if i just trying to run the proc four then we have it no longer prints the welcome message it just jumps back because uh the bytes has been overwritten okay and now if i just turn off the computer and if i turn the computer on back then we'll see that uh all the information like uh, uh the bytes that i've written to proc one and proc four would still remain there. So let's start by changing the theme again. So 1E, okay. And if I just want to load, so yeah, first just, just to demonstrate, so prog1 currently just drop, just uh, jumps back to the shell, okay, as well as the prog4, okay. So the rest of the progs still display their messages. So I've just uh, updated my my USB flash drive and it, yeah it does work uh, for it does boot from the, from the USB flash drive has been demonstrated many times before okay so um, the coolest thing about this is that we can actually um, edit yes no it's now empty so let's kind of continue developing so I can say load and prog one and edit so we can we can go on developing our prog one. So this is kind of like a complete development cycle because um, whatever uh, whatever program we've been working uh, working on, we can just save that program, and then later on the next day, for instance, or or in a couple of hours, we can just 
turn on our computer again and go back to that program and keep uh, keep editing that kind of program and that's pretty much all about it so when I was a kid I had ZX Spectrum computer but I didn't know how to use tape so whatever game I was uh, I wanted to play I needed to type the codes in from a book I had then play a game for five five, five minutes or so and I've spent a couple of hours before that to type the code and to make sure it works I was around six years old or seven years old at that time and then I just turned the computer off and all my work was dropped so if I wanted to play the game in the next day I just needed to type the code again so since then I wanted to have some sort of a minimalist environment like ZX Spectrum but allowing to save your work yeah and um, also, uh, I always target uh, the most minimalist solutions possible because for me personally, minimalism is the way to focus on the very gist of, of, what, uh, of what you're doing, basically. Um, and this, this is exactly this, the case with, with these machine codes. I'm currently uh, learning them and I'm going to be making some tutorials on how to code in machine codes. And I think that this is really cool that from now on, I can code whatever program, like game or app that fits 512 bytes under my own operating system, and then I can sort this work, and then I can load it again. And even then, let's say I've written some something amazing. Let's let's say let, let's think think about it, right? So let's say I've written something interesting. So then I can just uh, uh, unplug my USB flash drive, plug it into my main computer, to my main laptop. And let's say using the DD command on Linux, I, could, I just can extract the game from PROG1 or PROG2, 4, 3, 4, 5, whatever. And then I can just write that to uh, like after, at, at the very end. So eventually when I type help, then there would be one more command in the bottom, let's say. Okay. So that would be like one more command at the bottom represented the game that I've created, let's say. So that's the complete cycle. And this complete cycle makes me, I don't know, this, this is the most satisfying project uh, I've, I've ever been doing, basically. So, yeah, really the most satisfying thing, even though it's that simple. So every single command here is no, lo no more than 512 bytes. And it's written, uh, every single line of assembly code is commanded and it's covered in the video series. So I was literally live coding this sort of a thing. Well, obviously I was preparing like uh, writing some code. Some, some, sometimes I was, uh, I, I had a paper with with assembly code uh, when there was there were some essential things that I couldn't handle, uh, like keep in mind, just couldn't memorize them. But anyway, um, uh, this this expression of minimalism actually is something that I uh, I'm kind of like proud of for the very first time in my life, guys. So. I have no idea whether, whether, like, if you understood what the heck is this and why did I do this, I'm not sure. I tried to, I tried my best to explain. But anyway, here, 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 here it is. Here is the game OS developer pack, as I call it. There is also third party games pack. It's available on Monkey app. You can download and just play games. And there would be one more pack later on. Uh, I would call it uh, Komaki King game pack, so whatever games I would be able to develop in x86 machine codes would it be then embedded to this final pack and would it be released as CMK game, game pack. Okay guys, so uh, I really hope uh, lots of tutorials on how to code in x86 machine codes using this operating system, this, this exact environment, this editor, so all the software I've written. So relying only on uh, relying only on the software I've written on my own. So that's the format of the tutorials. Uh, so these tutorials hopefully come in soon. And by the way, if you want to try this, you don't necessarily need to write, uh, to write the uh, floppy image to the USB flash drive. Uh, you can use the online emulator. There would be a link in the description below the video. So all you need to run this to try uh, this experience that you've just seen on your screen. You, need, you just need the gameos.image file. You need to upload this to the online emulator. I'm using copy.shell slash v6 uh, v86, and then click about uh, click a button uh, load from uh, HDD uh, hard disk drive, 
and then just click the button start emulation that's self that's very self-explanatory it's really easy to do uh, if you're not sure how exactly this can be done reference my previous videos on coding this game os and you'll see how am i doing this many times in the run and then uh you can experience what, what you've just seen on your screen just literally right in your browser and when i would be streaming uh, my series on coding in x86 assembly. I'm going to be relying on the emulator as well. Probably I'm, I'm going to be using uh, Camel on Linux, but uh, doing this in the online emulator is also on the cards, so it just doesn't really matter that much because uh, the power of uh, online emulator is, is good enough for this tiny little games. Okay, guys, so this is it from my side. Thanks for joining me in, within this adventure into the deep internal world of Code Monkey King. Uh, it was a real pleasure for me to guide you through through this, uh, what I have inside, okay? So I hope you've enjoyed this. Hope you learned something interesting out of it. I hope to see you in the next videos quite pretty soon. This is it from my side. Until the next time, and take care.